Okay, so. I plan to um, finish the, uh, the annual written report um, next month. Um, so these are some of the things that I, I plan to talk about over here. Um, my uh, contact information is over here on the right side of the screen. So if anyone uh, needs to contact me, all my contact information is here. And um, just uh, some of my previous experience, um, I worked with a few organizations identifying uh, John Doe's and Jane Doe's and uh, trans Doe's um, using DNA to uh, and genealogy to to identify the missing persons. Genome sequencing, so very related to to the the project here. Um, so I'm going to talk about the progress we've made since since last year. Um, last year in October, uh, we created a GEDmatch project, which now I believe has 138 members, um, or DNA kits anyway. And in November, I completely revamped the uh, the Dalton International DNA project. Uh, page at familytreedna.com. I'll show you guys that in one second here. Um, in January of this year, we rolled out the uh, Big Y DNA test plan, which was a huge success. Um, I selected uh, specific members of each genetic family, and uh, Karen sent out an email. Um, explaining what we were doing. And we've had, I believe, 12 big Y DNA test upgrades because of that. And uh, now we get to do some pretty cool stuff with the data, which is I started making phylogenetic trees from the SNP data. Um, so yeah, so the big Y data that we uh, received, I've reviewed and um, created the phylogenetic trees. The focus areas right now are the Y DNA, the big Y DNA, um, and the GEDmatch project. The neglected areas, um, I haven't started uh, analyzing the mitochondrial DNA yet. Um, I do plan to take a look at that and write some information about that as well. So you can just type uh, Dalton YDNA. And uh, it's, for me, it's showing up as the first one here on the results. So this is the project page here. So if you'd like to join our project, you just click this join button right here, and then it'll ask you to sign in with an email address and a password. If you're not a member of familytreedna.com, you can make a membership account and purchase um, either the autosomal DNA test or the Y DNA test through them. Um, so we, we updated it, we put pictures here, we, we updated all the tabs with information. Um, Karen and I worked on this quite a bit. And you can see that on the surnames tab here, We have 249 Daltons in the project right now out of our 310 members. And seven with the DAU spelling and four with DOL spelling. 
Now the most exciting part of the DNA project page is the results. I prefer the uh, colorized chart. So this is all of the, the members of the DNA project that have chosen to make their results available to the public. Their names are anonymized, but um, so you can see group, the first group here, the yellow group is group A, genetic family A. That's what we're talking about in the uh, chat there. The second group here is genetic family B, genetic family C, genetic family D, E, and so on. So the, the groupings here are, are grouped by haplogroup and by short tandem repeats, which are these numbers here. So your haplogroup um, is a branch point in the, in the tree of life. So it starts with genetic atom is what we call them. And every male on this planet is related to genetic atom. So let me go back to my slides. So this uh, top of this tree diagram here would be genetic atom. And then everybody is related to genetic atom somehow. If you're in haplogroup I, you're down here. If you're in haplogroup, well, most people are in what's called RM269, and that would be R1B down here at the very end. Now, we do have a few members that are in I and a few members that are in E. So short tandem repeats is what we were looking at with all those numbers on that screen. And that's what you get when you do the 12 marker, 25, 37, 67, or 111 marker tests at familytreedna.com. These are Y-DNA tests, basic Y-DNA tests. And the problem with the STR markers is sometimes there's what's called back mutations. So, you can kind of group people together based on their short tandem repeats. So this is repeats of the base pairs in the DNA. Um, let's say there's CGG, 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 12 times right here for this, this member. Um, so these are just at specific markers. These numbers up top tell you the, the, the point in the DNA, so they, they, they label each, each area of your DNA with, with a grouping of numbers up top here. And then these numbers down here, 12, 25, 14, these numbers are how many times the pattern repeats in your DNA. So you can see here that some have 12 on this first marker and some have 13. So what happens is we, we try and group people together that have the same, the same numbers all the way across, but um, mutations occur and you either lose a set of those repeats or you can gain a set of repeats. Um, and that generally happens generation to generation. So your son may have, uh, you know, 12 markers here where you had 13 um, repeats at that location. Um, but what happens is what's called back mutations, which make these kind of unreliable. Um, so back mutations would be like if my son had 12 markers, I have 13, but my son has 12 markers. But then his son gains a, 
a pair. So he has 13. He goes back to the original like me. Um, so that would be called a back mutation. So that kind of makes it hard to estimate how far back in time uh, these, these repeats occurred. Um, another thing is called convergence. So you can imagine because of these uh, mutations that occur, um, they can keep occurring and keep occurring until you're almost all the way over to the Fitzpatrick's, which are very genetically close to, you know, to our groups. But I'm just saying, like, these, these numbers could change so dramatically over generation and generation that they could almost look identical to another family. And that's called convergence. And then there's also, there's unknown mutation rates. So your son could have all the exact same markers as you, but then his son could have uh, three of those numbers that are different from yours. You know, it's, it's, it's completely random how it happens. So SNPs are a little bit more reliable. Uh, these are known as single nucleotide polymorphisms. And these, the SNPs are what constitute your haplogroups. So haplogroups are just branch points in the tree. So as we were looking at this tree here, um, the branch here between um, A and the rest of them, you know, that branch point right here is the A haplogroup branch point. So that's, that's what a haplogroup is. Um, so with SNPs, there's very, very seldom back mutations. Um, once a, a son inherits a mutation from his father, he has it and he gives it to all of his sons. Uh, there's not a whole lot of variation in that. Um, there's no known convergence. You, the, the mutations for the single nucleotide polymorphisms they, they happen at specific points in your DNA. And it is very, very, very rare for someone else to have the exact same mutation as you got in this occurrence. So these are also easier to estimate the time uh, genealogical time reference as to common ancestors because they're they're more reliable because they on average uh, mutate every other generation where um, short tandem repeats mutate every generation sometimes sometimes they don't sometimes you could have two or three generations where they don't mutate but it seems like single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs are more stable in their mutations with every other generation. So I've talked quite a bit about uh, SNPs. The big Y test is the SNP test at Family Tree DNA. It's very expensive, which is why I was shocked when we had 12 members uh, upgrade their DNA tests when, when we sent out the, uh, the email. Um, is if you are a member at Family Tree DNA, see how some of these spaces are blank here for the uh, common ancestor, or the oldest known ancestor. Uh, I'm going to just run through how to update that real quick. So this is what it looks like uh, when you log in. So you go up here to account settings. Just click on your name and then this drops down. Go to account settings. So then you would go to the genealogy tab and 
earliest known ancestors right here. So then this is the field where you put in your oldest known Dalton ancestor, and you could put other information like who he married, when he was born, when he died. But uh, You can also please place the country of origin if you know. Um, and if your oldest known ancestor, you, you, you just know he's from Ireland and you can just put Ireland. But if, if you're not really sure, then I would say put US. Um, and then you could do the same for your maternal ancestor. This is helpful for mitochondrial DNA testing. We started a GEDmatch project, ancestor project is what they call it. GEDmatch is a free website. It uses autosomal DNA, not Y DNA. Y DNA is, um, I'm going to just use the basic understanding of XY is a male and XX is a female. Um, so Y DNA only comes from father to son, uh, and females do not have Y DNA. So autosomal DNA are your other chromosomes besides your sex chromosomes. So this is what you get when you do a test at ancestry.com. At familytreedna.com, they call their autosomal DNA test family finder. Um, you can upload to GEDmatch from any DNA testing company, Ancestry23, MyHeritage, Family Tree, And that's what makes the website really useful is because if, if you've already looked at all your matches on Ancestry, you can upload to this website and see if you have matches from 23andMe, MyHeritage. Uh, you could see if you have matches from FamilyTreeDNA.com. So this website right here, has step-by-step -step instructions on how to download your DNA. So to join the GEDmatch project, you have to download your DNA from one of these companies and uh, upload it onto the GEDmatch website. And then once you've uploaded your DNA onto the GEDmatch website, there we are. And then you just click this join button here. And then there's gonna be two fields asking why you wanna join the project and um, other, pro other things you're a member of. Just to give us some information about the members that are joining. And then you select which kit you want to join. And then you click Submit. Um, if, if you uh, notice that you submit a, an application to join the project and uh, it's been a few days and we haven't um, admitted you, just send one of us an email and, and Karen and I, Karen or I can, can go on and admit you to the project. So once you join the project, here's what you can do it. Go back down to the ancestor projects link. And then you put in your kit number here. Oops, that's all right. That's it. So you put in your GEDmatch number. So when you upload your DNA to GEDmatch, this they'll give you, they'll assign you a number for your DNA kit. And then once you do that, you just submit. And then it populates a list of all the members of the project that you match DNA with. Gives you their kit number, their name, whether they have a tree or not, the chromosome that you match on, how many centimorgans of DNA that you share, their email address, 
and optional wire mitochondrial DNA haplogroup and where they uploaded from. I'm just gonna cover that real quick here. I'm gonna try. Um, so on familytreedna.com, when you join our project, you can join with autosomal DNA. You don't have to have Y DNA to join our project. So women can join the, the Dalton International DNA project as well. This is an added benefit to it. So I'm actually gonna use my project to show this example. familytreedna.com account. Eventually you'll get something that looks like this, where you get your Y DNA results there, and your family finder autosomal DNA results here, your matches. But you wanna go down here to additional tests and tools and go to advanced matches. Now, once you're in this advanced matches group, you can select the Dalton International DNA Project. And you have to select which test you want to compare your results with. So family finder is the autosomal tests. So in this case, it does the same thing as the other one, like Judmatch. Um, it just returns a list of all the members of the project that you have DNA uh, matches with. So now I get to the juicy stuff, the phylogenetic trees that I created. Uh, genetic family A here first, because there are some significant changes. We had two members here that both share a common ancestor. Okay, I'm still here. <sighs> All right, so two members that have the same ancestor, Reuben, and because they both upgraded their tests to big Y, um, family tree DNA uh, populated the SNPs all the way down and assigned Reuben a SNP number, a single nucleotide polymorphism. So this is the mutation that Reuben had that his father did not have. And all of his descendants have this mutation right here. So what's cool about this is you can see this third member here. His ancestors were from the same area, but you can see that the tree splits here and he does not have this mutation. He has these mutations here, but he doesn't have Reuben's mutation. So that means that um, James's father or grandfather or great grandfather was Reuben's father. So if I were these three members, I would definitely be looking closely at these trees from each other 
and trying to connect the dots. But if your brick wall is Ruben, I would look very closely at John Flanagan Dalton because he's probably Ruben's brother. And Robert Sr. is probably Ruben's father. Or this might be Ruben's uncle and John Flanagan is Ruben's cousin. But they're really close. So I would be definitely looking into these trees here if you're one of these three members. Um, and poor uh, member over here. He is also in genetic family A. He was placed there a long time ago, but he is not related to the rest of genetic family A back to 300 AD. So if more members upgrade their Y DNA tests, I'm sure he will have more matches in genetic family A to, to work with. But you can see his path is Canada to England where these members were all uh, Tennessee and Virginia. So one thing that's neat about this is now that we have Ruben here with a number, any member that um, thinks that they have Ruben as an ancestor, they can do a single SNP test at Family Tree DNA for $39 they can test to see if they have this SNP right here. Oops, I didn't mean to block that out. They can test to see if they have this SNP right here. And, uh, and if they do, then that means that Ruben is in fact their ancestor. So if you were adopted, you, you could then probably figure out who your biological father is that way. Um, so let me show you the tree for genetic family D now. Genetic family D, we do not have any uh, known common ancestors between any of the, the members, but you can see the tree is doing some cool stuff here with all of the SNP, the big Y SNP tests. You can see that perhaps these three were brothers and you know uh, these guys, were brothers and these guys were brothers and these three were brothers so you can kind of see how that works as like a tree now these big blocks here with multiple numbers in them that just means that there's additional snips here that they haven't been able to sort out yet so as more people do big y dna tests they'll say oh well this guy over here has this snip, but no one else does. So we'll, we'll just make a branch off the tree over here and put this number here, over here, and then branch it down to the person that took the test. So that's how these big blocks get separated. Now, if you look at this block here with just two numbers, um, if this member right here had his brother do a big Y DNA test, which is not necessary, by the way, but if he did, they would be able to delineate these two numbers. They would assign them to whoever they belong to, basically. Let's say their father had 15124995. They would both have that SNP and they would both branch from that same SNP. So if you if you were really enthralled in this stuff and you wanted to see, you know, exactly which family member had which number applied, you could test known family members and know it that way. Well, that's all that I have. Um, let me go back to my slides. Yep, so I plan to uh, put out another big Y uh, target testing plan here soon. I plan to send out another bulk email at Family Tree DNA to invite members to join the DNA project. Um, and do some social media. I want to put together a, a group of videos explaining some of this stuff. So, so these are my goals for the project. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. And